your Bibles this morning. I have an assignment, and uh, I want to, amen, take my time and work it because I don't believe it'll be a part one only. Amen. St. John, the 14th chapter. St. John, the 14th chapter. Amen. And uh, I want you to join me in a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples, amen, in verse number 15. That's St. John, amen, the 14th chapter. And this is a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. Can you imagine somebody being with you for years? Somebody that have been everything to you? I mean, you had a concern, they were there for you. If you had a, uh, a bad day, they are there to build you up. Uh, if uh, you're running, uh, don't know how you're going to pay a bill, they were there to advise you. Uh, this is the kind of conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. Because here's what I want you to see. They had been physically together for over three years, three and a half years. Jesus had been everything to them. He had been everything. And here we pick it up in verse number 15. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, if you're not careful, you can be offended by that. You could be offended because if you love me, because it's almost as if he's questioning their love for him, but he's really not questioning their love for him. He's reinforcing it. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Because I think if we love one another, we ought to want to do for one another the way they have done for us. So he goes on to say in verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Now, he's saying, uh, I will pray to the Father and he's going to give you another one just like me. In other words, somebody that's not me, but somebody that's just like me. In other words, I know I've been everything to you all of this time, and I know it's hard for you to imagine me not being here, but the reality is the one that's getting ready to come and be a part of your life is going to be just like me. Oh, y'all got to get this. In, in other words, he says, uh, I will pray the Father and he will give you another. I, 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 watch this, stand up, darling. I, I can't imagine another woman like the one I got. And I ain't just saying that because there's a song. Ain't no woman like the one I got. Uh, uh, she can make the hair stand up on the back of your head. And it, but uh, I, I can't imagine another woman like the one I got. Well, I, I need you to see the picture. Jesus is saying, I'm going to send somebody that's going to be just like me, but going to do some things and be for you where I wasn't able to be and do. Come on, oh, y'all going to get this. He says, and I will pray the Father that he shall give you another, amen, comforter. Somebody say comforter. comforter. All, all right, now, now uh, that he may abide with you how long? He, he says, I'm giving you another comforter. Uh, another word for comforter is I'm giving you somebody else to help you. I'm, I'm giving you another to help you. I don't know about you, but I need some help. 
I, I can't live my life without the help that he brings. I know, I know you think you are living your life on your own. I know you think you're doing what you're doing on your own. But the reality is, he is there. There was an old gospel singer by the name of James Moore. I mean, y'all ever heard of him? He had a song, he was there all the time. He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. He was, oh boy, I'm trying to, cause sometimes, sometimes you don't think he's there, huh? but he's always there. I, I, I need some people. Get my mic, get my mic. I need some people today that realize that they need him. I, I need some people that know that they can't live their lives without him. I know I got some, you got some money in the bank, but sometimes your money can't do what you need. Ah, yeah. Waiting patiently. Oh, I'm gonna leave that alone. How did that song go? How did, how did it go? Waiting patiently in life. He was there. Come on, say it. All the time. He was there all the time. He was there. He was there. Waiting patiently in line, he was there. Come on, he was there. He emphasis on that. Sometimes the devil tell you that he'll leave you. But he said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Just when you thought that there was no way out of what you were in, he steps right in on time. Oh, I'm trying to get there. Woo! Let, 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 let go back to the text. It says, and I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter that he may what? Come on, say it like you mean it. Buy with you how long? That means come hell, come high water. That means that whatever you're going through, he is right there. Matter of fact, go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. 
and the fifth verse. Go to Hebrews. And, and guys in the back, pull up, pull up the Amplified Translation. Amplified Translation, that's Hebrews 13, verse number five from the Amplified Translation. Pull that up. Read it, you got it? Go ahead. Let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature, be free from the love of money, uh -huh. shun greed, be financially ethical, being content with what you have, uh -huh. for he has said, for he has said, I will never, I will what? Never, uh -huh, read. under any circumstances, desert you. Oh, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, sister Deborah. I, I need y'all to lay eyes on it. L look up there. He said, listen what he said. I want y'all to see it. I will not in any way, what? Fail you, nor give up, nor leave you without support. Watch this. I, uh, I will not. I will not. I will not in any degree, leave you how? Oh. You mean to tell me that he never leaves me? You mean to tell me whatever I'm going through is right there? You mean to tell me that he says three times in the scripture, I will, I will, I will never leave you. But put that back up there. Put it back up now because I need y'all to see something. He says, I will not in any way, what, fail you. See, man will fail you. But God said, I'm, I'm so much for you that I'll never. Y'all need to talk to me like you believe that. And then what's this? He says, give up on you nor leave you without what? Support. How many need his support? Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I need his support. I need his support when I think I need it. I need it when I don't think I need it. Cause I can't live life without it. Now back to the text, woo. Boy, when I get to my subject, y'all gonna shout. But, um, but it says in verse number 16, and I will pray to the Father and he will give you another comforter that will abide with you forever, or always, always, forever. You know, the worst thing that you can tell a person is, I don't know if I'm gonna always be there for you. See, a wife don't never need to hear a husband say, I don't know if I'm gonna be there for you all the time. Husband don't ever need to hear a wife say, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna be there. See, that's why you don't say negative things to one another. Watch this, as believers, we ought to always be giving one another the assurance that God is with you. I don't care what's going on in the world, God is with you. And then watch this, God being with you doesn't mean that what you're going through, it's just going to vanish. It means that if it don't vanish, God said, although it's there, I'm going to be with you to see you through it all. Amen. That's right. Be because, let, let's be honest, there's some things you've walked through that God didn't remove. But guess what? He was there. And because he was there, you were able to get through it, Right? So, 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 knowing this gets you through whatever you're facing. Now, now it goes on. It didn't stop there. Verse number uh, 17, he says, even the spirit of truth. Now, notice he refers to the comforter. He refers to the helper as the spirit of truth. So, that means that sometime we face things that people tell us it's not true. Watch this, I need the spirit of truth 
because sometimes I hear stuff in my ears that ain't true. And I need the spirit of truth to remind me it's a lie and I don't need to process it. How many of y'all ever had the enemy to tell you he gonna destroy you, kill you? See, you ain't gotta listen to it because that's a lie. It's error. You have the spirit of truth is there to remind you of what God's word has promised you. See, the devil tell you you're going to fail. Your business is going to fail. You're going to get fired from your job. Your marriage ain't going to work. Your children are going to turn their back on you. And you need to remind yourself that there's a spirit of truth there to remind you that you've just been lied to. So he says, even the spirit of truth who the whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither what? Knoweth him. He says, watch this, but you know him for he what? Dwelleth in you and shall be what? Notice two things he says. He dwelleth in you and shall be in you. In other words, you have to believe that Holy Spirit lives in you. I would never be a part of a church that don't believe in the Holy Spirit or don't teach on the Holy Spirit. You need to know that the Holy Spirit is a real person. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not a feeling. He's not a jerk. He's a real person person that has a personality watch this he's so much real Jamar that he knows what's going to happen on tomorrow and watch this that's why you want to rely on him because I don't I pray for the best on tomorrow but I don't know what's going to happen in tomorrow so he knows so I can rest in him and then he's bringing me into tomorrow. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, and, and can we put the New King James up there? Read it from the King, New King, uh, verse number 18. I, I love this, I love this from the New King James. He's, I, come on. I will not leave you orphans. How, he said, I won't leave you like an orphan. Do y'all know what an orphan is? It's sad, but an orphan is a child or children that their parents have walked away from or abandoned them. God is saying, I'll never leave you like an orphan. In other words, I'll always be a parent to you. I'll always be there for you. I'm always there even when you don't think I'm there. I'm there for you all the time. He said, I won't leave you orphans. I will come to you. You know, one of the most probably hurtful moment in a child's life is when they overhear their parents say that I don't want you or you are a mistake or I wish you would have never been born. That ain't what God say about us. He's glad we were born. He's always here for us because he said I won't leave you as an orphan. He said, but I'll come to you. What is he insinuating? Others may walk away, but I'm always there. I'm always there. Now, let's go over to the 16th chapter. Oh, let's just, just foundation. We're trying to get there. All right, I need the new King James as we start reading. Let's start at verse number five. Number five, we're in St. John 16. Are y'all tracking? All right, come on. 
But now I go away to him. Now, now, now listen what he says. But now conversation is continuing. But now I go away to him. Uh-huh. Who sent me. H hold it. See, you got to realize that Jesus was sent. Now he said, I go away to the one that sent me. Jesus was sent by the Father to prepare us for who would come and be permanently within us. In other words, he got his fathers accustomed to depending upon him, looking to him, and all of a sudden he said, I got to go. But I won't leave you comfortless. He said, listen, listen what he says here. He says, but now I go my way to him that sent me. Uh-huh. And none of you asked me, where are you going? See, they heard him say he's going to go to the one that sent him, but none of them asked him where we're going. Why didn't they ask him where he was going? They were just so tore up when he said that he was leaving them that they, had, they couldn't even process where he was going. In other words, they couldn't imagine their lives without him. But here's the tragedy of believers today. We think we can live our lives without him. Where they couldn't see their lives without him. In other words, we've got to get to a place that we recognize that we are never to live our lives alone. Because even if Janice is not physically with me, I'm still not alone. I need everybody to understand because we live our lives like we, when nobody's physically there, we're, we're alone. You are never alone. Even if you don't acknowledge him, he's still there. And it pays, it pays to acknowledge him. Because when you acknowledge him, you access who he is and what he's able to do in your life. So you're never alone. Somebody shout, I'm never alone. I am never alone. He's always there. You just read earlier that he indwells us. Amen. He's not a feeling. Now, go ahead, Sister Deborah. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. See, he said, because I said these things to you, instead of you asking where I'm going, he said, sadness and grief has filled your heart. In other words, your heart now you're already factoring in a void. I said you're already factoring in a void where he really don't ever want us to live our lives void of who he is. Do you not know there is a place in your heart that not one person can feel but him? Nobody can feel it. Your husband, your children, car, house, wealth, important. Only he can feel that place in your heart. He says, he said, but because I said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Come on, Sister Deborah, read. Nevertheless. Okay, now we're about to get into what I'm going to teach on today. He says, nevertheless. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. Stop. Today, I want to teach on this subject, part one. It is to your advantage. Look at your neighbor say, it is to your advantage. Now, you may not think it is, but it is. Amen, because this is what I do know. God never want us to live our lives at a disadvantage. He wants us to live our lives as believers having the advantage because if you live your life at a disadvantage then you're really not glorifying him but when you live your life at an advantage now people recognize it's not you but who lives in you 
In other words, it's, it's, it's to your advantage. Look at your neighbor and say, it's to your advantage. Believe it or not, uh, having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life is to your advantage. It is. I said, it's to your advantage. It's not at a disadvantage. It's to your advantage to have Holy Spirit living on the inside of you because he is a real person that will never leave you nor will he forsake you. He's a very present help in times of need. If you make your bed in hell, he'll be right there. Amen. He's your bridge over troubled water. He's your bond in Gideon. He's your bread of life. He's the light of the world. My God, he's everything. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. Come on. There's another song we used to sing. Everything, everything, you are my everything. Everything, everything, Lord, you are everything to me. My Okay, they don't, they don't forgot it. But watch this, he's your everything, isn't he? He's your everything. I don't know about you, but he's my everything. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jonathan, Acostas, that's what it means live, live in a supernatural life. Amen, because when he's your everything, that's supernatural. Now, so this morning I want to talk about it's to your advantage. Now, first of all, when I say it's to your advantage, I'm not calling the Holy Spirit an it. I am, call, I am only paraphrasing how Jesus said it is to your advantage that I go away. But the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a real person. Because if you're not careful, you will refer, associate the Holy Spirit to an it. We used to sing a song years ago in the Baptist church that I grew up. You must have that fire and Holy Ghost, that burning thing that Keeps the fire will burn. I know. I, and then get to it. It makes you move. It makes you shout. It makes you cry. See, in other words, it was ingrained in us that he was a what? It. When he's really not in it. You got to listen to songs you sing because they will change what God says. So Holy Spirit is not an it. He's a real person, amen, that, uh, that's part of the Trinity. Now, so it's to your advantage. First of all, another helper. Let's, let's deal with that phrase, another helper. He says, I'll pray to the Father and he should give you another helper. Watch this, uh, come here, my PPAs, all of my PPAs. If you're part of those that's covering me today, that's good, y'all come. These guys are my PPAs. They're pastor's personal assistant. Another way of saying they are pastor's helper. They help me do what I do in ministry. I can't do what I do without their help. Are y'all following me? Holy Spirit is your helper. God has sent him to help you, to aid you, to assist you, to counsel you, to advise you, to strengthen you, 
to stand by you, to comfort you, to sustain you. In other words, they're here to aid and assist. But here's the reality. The reality is, why was it so devastating when Jesus said to them, Ebony, that I must go to him that sent me and sorrow filled their heart? Holy Spirit can be where Jesus wasn't capable of being. When Jesus was in the earth, he took on humanity. He could not physically be everywhere at the same time. But the Holy Spirit, since he's omnipresent, he could be everywhere at the same time and know everything. These guys can't be everywhere at the same time. They can only minister to my immediate need based on what they see. But he sees beyond. He knows beyond. And now he does that beyond what we see or feel. Are y'all following me? He knows you got a bill coming up that you don't have all the necessary money and he have already made provision to take care of it. Literally, Elray, pull that over towards you. Literally, another helper. I want y'all to see the significance of this phrase. He says, I pray to the Father and he shall give you another helper. Literally, it means someone called alone to help. They're called alone to help. And there are times they go in front. There are times they go to the, he goes to the side. In other words, he's always there. He's called alone to help. Now, guess what? He's there, but if I don't ask him for help, I'll bump into stuff that I don't have to bump into because I don't acknowledge that he's there. In other words, I've got to acknowledge that he's there because he's another helper sent to help me in life in whatever I'm dealing with. Thank you, guys. So the phrase... Another helper is one who comes alongside and it says, because you remember the helper will be with us forever, not a short period of time, but forever because Jesus had been the disciples teacher, provider. He'd been there when they experienced fear, when they experienced weakness, He strengthened them when they experienced confusion. He was there to counsel them. He had been everything to these guys. And now he lets them know that he's going to leave. And and watch this, watch this. He says, nevertheless, verse number seven again. Let's look at it. Can we pull that up, verse number seven? He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage... It is to your advantage. Now, let's look at this word advantage because we read over words like that and we don't really uh, understand. But from a biblical perspective, I want you to understand this word uh, advantage. Now, when, when it says it is to your advantage, he's saying, number one, it's for your profit. It's for your profit. It's for your profit. Go to Isaiah 48. Go, everybody go to Isaiah 48. This is my daily confession. I make this verse part of my daily confession. Isaiah 48 and verse number, I don't just confess it just to profess it, 
but Isaiah 48 and 17. Are y'all there? It says, thus says the Lord, my Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord God which teaches you to what? Prophet. How many know God wants you to profit? God want, your, want you to profit. God want you to profit in everything that you do. In other words, he's the Lord God that teaches us how to profit. God want your life to be an advantage. He teach you how to profit in everything that you do, everything that you say. Amen. I am the Lord God that teaches you the prophet. He says, who what? Lead you by the way that you should go. What did that tell me? Not always am I going in the way that I need to go, but when he teach me how to profit, he leads me in the way that I should go. And then what I said, didn't stop there. Look at the next verse. Pull the next verse. It all goes, when he teach you the prophet, pull up the next verse, please. Uh, verse number uh, 19. It goes on to say, amen. Oh. He said, and then he says, oh, he says, oh, uh-huh. That you had heeded my commandments. Uh-huh. Then your peace would have been like a river. He said, when, I, when, I, when you go in the right way, you will start having peace like a river, amen, and like the righteousness, like the waves of the sea. God want your life to be calm, not a lot of drama. Come on, somebody. In other words, amen, when we look at this word advantage, number one, it's for your profit or profitable. Number two, uh, this word advantage is meaning beneficial. In other words, for your benefit, it's beneficial. He said it's beneficial that I go away. It's good that I go away. It is expedient that I go away. Now, uh, because we have to understand that if he didn't go, watch this, if he didn't go, the Holy Spirit couldn't have came. He had to leave because the person of the Holy Spirit could not have come if he wouldn't have left. He physically left, but he didn't leave us complex. He didn't leave us without a comfort. He didn't leave us because guess what? When you get in your car every day, guess who gets in your car with you? When you get on an airplane, guess who gets on the airplane with you? When you're out walking, guess who's out walking with you? In other words, he can be everywhere at the same time where Jesus physically could not be everywhere at the same time. So he said it was expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, somebody say comforter. comforter. Amen. The helper, the helper would, not would not be able to come. Able to come. Amen. So when we look at it, amen, we needed him to go away. Now let's go back over to the 16th chapter. Amen. Going back to the 16th chapter because he's saying, I am sending someone to take my place. He says, I'm sending someone to take my place, someone to act on my behalf, someone to do everything for you that I've been. He said, it will be better. It will be better than having me in the flesh. How could it be better than having Jesus in the flesh? Matter of fact, let's look at the message translation. Let's look at the message translation of St. John 16 and 7. I love this translation. Uh, that's the message translation. It says, so let me say it again, this truth. It's better for you that I leave. Now, the new king said it is to your advantage, but the message said it is better for you that I leave. I love it. He says, if I don't leave, watch this, Watch this. What does he say? My friend won't come to you. Holy Spirit is your friend. 
I said, Holy Spirit is your friend. He says, if, it's better for you that I leave. If I don't leave, the friend won't come to you. How many know you got a friend in the Holy Spirit? I, I love that friend because it becomes personal. Amen. You know, watch this. Elder Peoples over here, he's my brother. Y'all know he's my natural brother. Stand up, Elder Tyrone. That's my oldest brother back there. Stand up, Elder Peoples. They're not just my natural brothers. They're my friends. My brothers are not just my brothers. They're my friend. We call one another. We check on one another. We, we are friends. You follow me? But he said, I'll be a friend closer than your friend. Are you following me? There's my sister. Stand up, Diane. She's my sister. She's my friend. But... Although they're my friend, I have a friend that's closer than that. Folks, you got a friend that's closer than any friend. I'm just trying to show you until you become, until you get intimate with him, you won't see how it's an advantage. It's an advantage. Amen. Because what's this? He becomes so many things. Look at the Amplified Translation. We're going to move away, but I, I just need you to look at this. Look at uh, verse number seven from the Classic Amplified. From the Classic Amplified. Go ahead and read it. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Now, who... Who is saying that it's, to, it's profitable, it is expedient, it is advantage, advantageous? Who's saying that? Yeah. Jesus is saying it's better. If he's saying it's better, then guess what? Uh-huh. Now, how's it better, Jesus? Because if I do not go away, the comforter... All right, so if I don't go away, the comforter... Now, let's look at who the comforter is. Counselor. Oh, so can, can y'all put that up there, please? They don't need to see my face. I want them to see that scripture. Amen. Look, look, look. He says, the comforter, which is the counselor. How many, how many needs a counselor from time to time? Watch this. Nobody can counsel you like he can. You know why? Because he don't tell you what you want to hear. He knows you in and out, and he's going to tell you the truth. You may not like it. The other night, stand up. I had a conversation with this gentleman Friday evening. Didn't I? Stand up, Janice. I had a conversation with the two of them, and it wasn't pleasant. I mean, what we were talking about, I, I was dealing with some hard issues with them, wasn't I? And watch this, I, I don't believe I know my tone got out of character. Didn't curse, but just the way I presented. So when we finished talking, I said to both of them, I said, y'all good? They said, we're good. We ended. I was driving home from men fellowship. Holy Spirit said, now, you know you didn't handle that conversation right. <laughs> You were out of character, and you need to call and apologize to them. Did I not call and apologize? See, you've got whatever he tell you, you got to swallow your pride. When he tell you to do something, don't you sit there and try to justify it and declare it. You know. Sometime between a husband and a wife. And see, men feel like they're all time right, don't we, men? Yeah. Men. Yeah. What you say now? Say it. Say it. But when he said apologize to your wife, but also wife, when he said apologize to your husband, you need to apologize to your husband. And then. Your kids. Your kids. I love you too, baby. 
Folks, let him be who he is in your life. Number one, he's your counselor. He's your personal counselor. You know, stand up, uh, Minister, uh, uh, Minister Nicole's Atkin. For you that have not met her, she's one of our counselors that uh, help us counsel. But Holy Spirit's going to counsel you in a way that Nicole's is not going to counsel. Nicole's going to, I don't know, sometimes she tell people, I've seen her in a session, she tell them she don't, sometimes she don't bite her tongue. Uh, but Holy Spirit going to be straightforward with you. And here's the worst thing that you can do is denounce and not receive his counsel. Thank you, Nicole's. So number one, it's to your advantage because you have a personal counselor that lives on the inside. Next. Number two, it's you have a personal helper. In other words, don't continue to try to do things the way you're doing it when he's trying to help you do it another way that's going to be to your advantage. I know, I know we think we're always right and we don't want nobody telling us. Do you not know that pride come, pride becomes before a great fall? And he's trying to help us, but we don't like people helping. By show of hand, how many of y'all don't like people helping you? Be honest with yourself. Folks, we've got to get to a place that we let, because sometimes, Holy Spirit will use, if he doesn't help you, he'll use somebody you don't even know. And then when you reject him, you reject and Holy Spirit help. He's trying to give us the advantage, but we don't want the advantage. We want to continue to do things the way we did it before Holy Spirit came in our lives. So it's to your advantage. It is to your advantage. Somebody said to your advantage. So number three, he is your what? Advocate. What is an advocate? An advocate is someone that will represent you before others. Do you not know you don't have to go and cuss people out? Holy Spirit knows how to represent you before people that are taking advantage of you, people that are trying to misuse you. He knows how to, because an advocate is a lawyer, someone that stands in your behalf, in your stead. Thank you, Mother. Watch this. A lot of us don't realize it, but we done messed things up because we took matters in our own hands when we should have let him stand in our stead. Because he can make it plain better than we can. He can present you, amen, in a more reputable way than you presenting yourself. So we have to let him represent us. We have to let him help us. He can close a business deal better than you can. Because this is where we have errored. You know where we err? We rely on Holy Spirit only for spiritual things. When he really wants to be a part of our natural life in everything that we do. He wants to be there on your job. He wants to be there in the neighborhood. He wants to be in the bank with you. He wants to, he knows how things need to be done. I I remember some years ago, uh, as your pastor, I wanted to buy a bus for the church. Uh, And you know, some of y'all heard me tell this. Church could afford it, and we were going to buy a bus. And I'll be honest, at that time, I wanted a bus because other churches had bus. I wanted us to have a bus to be able to say we had a bus in the parking lot. And we got a pretty good deal. And I prayed about it, and I went to the board meeting, and I presented it to the board, and they said no. My flesh was hurting for a moment. But I said, Lord, you gave, I don't want yes men and women on the board of directors. They said, Pastor, they said, if 
we go six months and we rent or chart several buses, then we'll reconsider. We went a whole year before we even rented a bus. That was God speaking through the board of directors. Come on, folks. God will speak. You got to be willing to listen. Why live your life at a disadvantage when you can live it at an advantage by recognizing that the Holy Spirit is a real person? He knows your end from the beginning. He knows everything. So if you'll listen to him, he will lead you out of stuff that you don't have to be in. So number four, not only is the Holy Spirit uh, giving you an advantage by being your counsel, your helper, your advocate, but also the Holy Spirit is your intercessor. Do you not know the Holy Spirit is praying for you even when you don't know you're being prayed for? He's praying for you when you don't even know you're being prayed for. He's praying, watch this, the unique thing about when Holy Spirit pray, he don't pray in general. He prays specifically about what you're going to go through to the Father. He's interceding. Check this out. Let's go to 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, this, are y'all getting anything out of this? I, I, we we, we want to get back in the Bible. I want to show you, you know, because for years we have limited the Holy Spirit and his ability. Now in 1 John, the second chapter, let's start at verse number one from the new King James. Can we pull that up? Thank you guys in the back. Amen. My little children, these things are right to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also the whole world. Now, by this, we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. In other words, he becomes, when he intercedes, he becomes a propitiation. He becomes a substitute. When you don't know what to pray, he prays for you. He's praying for you, about you, things that you don't even know. Earlier we read, he dwells in us, right? If he dwells in you, he knows what you're dealing with. He knows your thought even before you express them. Now he's praying in behalf of you to the Father on things that you have not even uttered. You know, when I, when I think about Evangelist Duncan, she's our uh, chief intercessor uh, for the church stand up daughter. She's in here praying. And if you ever listen to her pray, she prays in spirit. She prays in English. She prays about things that she knows, but she prays about things she don't know. And the reality is when she prays in the spirit, she's praying about things that she's hearing in the spirit to God on behalf of the church. Well, Holy Spirit is really, it's not her praying, but it's Holy Spirit praying through her. Holy Spirit will pray through you if you will allow him to pray through you because how many of you ever prayed stuff you weren't even thinking about? It just come out of you. That's Holy Spirit there. He's bringing stuff to your attention that you didn't even know about that now he's getting you through some things that you wouldn't have got through if he wasn't there. Come on, somebody. Boy, this is good, isn't it? Yeah. Now, and then number, number five, not only is he our counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, but watch this. Number five, you have an advantage because he becomes your what? Strengthener. Somebody say strengthener. 
my God. Y'all remember when David and his men came back to Ziglag and they found everything burnt up? Uh, everybody was ready to stone David and kill David like he didn't lose his wife and his house. And the Bible said David began to pray. He turned from them and turned, began to pray. And the Bible said he encouraged himself. Well, he didn't really encourage himself. Holy Spirit on the inside of him strengthened him and encouraged him. Holy Spirit knows how to strengthen you and encourage you through stuff that you couldn't get through. My God, can I get a witness in here today that you haven't... Sometimes there's nobody there to encourage you or strengthen you, but you feel encouraged, you feel strengthened because the Holy Spirit is right there. Boy, that is good news. That is good news. And then watch this. Then he becomes, uh, here's the last synonym that describe him. He becomes a standby. Nobody will stand by you like he will. My God, when other people turn their back on you, he'll be right there. My God, you won't have to walk through stuff on your own because he'll stand by you. How many know he'll stand by you? Boy, he knows how to stand by you. Matter of fact, go to 2 Timothy, 4th chapter. 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter. 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter. 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter. And I uh, want to pick it up at verse number 12. Sister Deborah, y'all just listen to Paul. Paul is, Paul is testifying to Timothy about when he thought people was going to stand with him and everybody he thought was going to stand with him turned their back on him. Anti Pick it up. Antichigas, I have sent to Ephesus, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troyes when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the carpersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his words. You also must beware of him for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me. Notice what he said, no one stood with me, uh-huh. But all forsook me. Uh-huh. May it not be charged against them. Paul said, although they didn't have the courage to stand with me, he said, I don't pray against them. He said, I'm not even gonna hold it against them. Uh-huh, next verse. But the Lord stood with you. Oh, but who? The Lord. Man, God will stand with you when everybody else turned their back. Don't you ever tell somebody you are in this by yourself. You've got an unseen partner. You've got an unseen friend that stick closer than a brother. He'll never leave you. He said, I'll never leave you. Nor will I forsake you when people turn their back on you. He's right there standing by you. My God, because it says, will not come to you. He says in close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. How many know because he's in close fellowship with us every day, we can live life from an advantage instead of a disadvantage? As I begin to close here, I want you to know that you've got somebody that's with you all the time. And he has come to live in you because he don't ever want you to feel like you're at a disadvantage. But you have an advantage You've got somebody that will stick with you, stick closer with you, somebody that will talk with you, someone that will never abandon you, somebody that will be there to understand you when nobody else understands you, somebody to be there to counsel you, somebody to be there to strengthen you, somebody to stand with you, somebody to intercede on your behalf. In other words, you have 
the Holy Spirit. And he's there to give you the advantage, not take the advantage. And for that reason, you ought to wake up every day thanking God that it's going to be a good day, a blessed day. My God is with me. We're standing on our feet. I need somebody in here that believe that God wants you to live life to the full. Look at somebody and say, God wants you to live life to the full. In other words, if you live life to the full, you don't live life at a disadvantage, but you live life at having the advantage.